Hi, my name's Andy Sykes. I'm an illustrator and animator, and I teach animation at universities here in the UK. Why not check out my website, hexjibber.com, where you can find animation and illustration by me, as well as more lessons in Flash and After Effects. Cheers. Hi, and welcome to my lesson on one of the fundamental principles of animation, squash and stretch. You may have watched my bouncing ball tutorial. I ended up making something that looks like this. And this uses squash and stretch. You may have heard me mentioning it in that tutorial, but I just thought we'd take a look at it a little bit closer. This, instead of a ball bouncing across the screen, is a ball bouncing on the floor. It's just falling to the floor and then bouncing back up again. Let's take a look at what I've done to make it look like it squashes when it hits the floor. Let's just go through frame by frame. I'm going to use the comma and full stop buttons on my keyboard to move through frame by frame. So you can see the ball is a normal shape. I've just drawn it with the shape tool with a stroke and a red fill. So it falls down. It's the same shape, but by the fourth keyframe, it's stretched out a little bit. That's because we're simulating the motion blur that appears in live action films. We're so used to seeing objects smearing as they move very quickly that we create this kind of stretchy effect in animation to mimic that. So as we move even further, the ball's stretched out even more. But when it hits the floor, it squashes down. That's to show that it's not a very dense ball. It's not a bowling ball, for example. It's a squashy, bouncy ball. So in the next frame, it's bouncing up off the floor, back into the air, like so. That's what it looks like. I'm moving backwards and forwards there. So there you go. That's a ball bouncing. So let's see how we can tweak that. Let's jump into our next example. What I've done, this is exactly the same animation, but I've added a couple of extra layers. I've added this highlight layer. So it's a shiny bouncy ball. And I've added a speed lines layer that we don't have any we don't have any drawings on that speed line layer until frame four. So here we go. That highlight's just moving with the ball. It's a specular highlight, just shows that it's shiny. But as we start to stretch, that specular highlight stretches with the ball. And I've introduced these speed lines showing that the ball is moving very, very quickly. This is another way, apart from stretching, to simulate motion blur and to show that an object is moving very quickly. It's borrowed from comic books. I recommend you check out my speed lines tutorial if you don't know how to create these kind of tapered lines. As we move further on, you can see the speed lines, they've changed a little bit. They're remaining up here. And this specular glow is actually stretching slightly outside of the ball as it moves even quicker. Let's move to the next frame. Ball squashed down, speed lines have disappeared because the ball has hit the floor and it's not moving as quickly. So everything's squashed down. As it moves back up, specular glow moves with it. And as we whoosh back up to the top, we can see we've got some speed lines showing that it's moving in the opposite direction now, upwards. And the specular glow is stretching with the ball. And as it snaps back to its original position there, We've got a few more speed lines and the specular glow moves back to its original size. So we've got a bit more of an exaggerated form of what we originally created because we've added specular glow and some speed lines. Let's take a look at an even more exaggerated example. What I've done is, as well as the specular glow and the speed lines, I've added some multiples so these are little tapered lines that show where the ball has been previously. And I've added them on this multiples layer. And I've only put them on frames five and six here, and then eight and nine. So they're coming right at the end of this movement to show it's traveling very quick. And then just to add a little bit of extra movement to where it hits the floor, because it's hitting the floor very quickly. 
So as it starts to move, again, there's no speed lines or multiples. But as it moves up again very, very quickly, we've got a couple of multiples there. And then we've got one just as it's moving up even further. So that looks like this. You can see that, that just adds some extra speed and oomph to that animation. There we go. Here's another example where I've changed some of the speed lines to red so they mimic the color of the ball. And I've got one speed line that's white to mimic the specular glow. So I've just changed a couple of the colors so that we get a bit more of a kind of mix. It looks more like a blur of all of the image content that's there. There we go. Let's take a look at another example with a star. You can see that this is a star bouncing off the floor. Let's take a look at the frames. So it starts off up here, starts to move down. And by the fourth frame, it's stretching out a bit. I've just done that with the free transform tool here in Flash. And as it moves even faster, it stretches out even further, hits the floor and squashes down. So if we look here, I'm going to double click. I've changed it to just being a straight line along the bottom because it's squishing those bottom two points as it hits the floor. I'm going to move forwards and you can see it stretches out as it moves up. Then we're ready to go again. So there you go. That's squash and stretch. Why not have a go at using it in some of your animations? And I'll see you in the next lesson. Hey, thanks for checking out this tutorial. Next up, why not take a look at my website, hexjibber.com, where you can find out more about my self-published books, the Hexjibber Coloring and Activity Book, and the Hexjibber Anti-Revision Book. They're both suitable for kids and adults alike, and are well worth checking out.